Hello everyone and welcome to my next video. I was tired of sitting in my living room showing you my pictures on the walls and stuff and now that it's springtime where I live I thought I would take you in my backyard at five o'clock in the early evening and just see how pretty it is here and and peaceful. Um, there are some hawks and stuff making noise in the background but we'll be okay. So today we are going to learn about taking care of our face masks. Now after it's been two months out there we're all in the throes of wearing masks. Some of us are making them from home. We're getting some that are um, professionally made or whatever, or handmade. So we're gonna go over how to make sure um, you know requirements of having a good face mask and what makes it a good face mask, how to clean your mask and maintain it, how to improvise with what you have in the home, and how to make your own face mask. And last but not least, we're gonna learn about how to make hand sanitizer of your very own. Um, I wish I had some of this information a little earlier, but since we don't know how long we're going to be wearing these masks, we might as well be um, thinking about how to keep them clean and keep them in good working order. So the first thing I want to go over with you is um, about having your own face mask uh, that you've made and you've gotten from home. Now, I made one out of cotton. I found this really nice material I had, so I really liked it. The only thing I did wrong when I made this mask is I, I couldn't find elastic two and a half months ago. It was all gone. So I actually cut the elastic I had in half, and now it's fraying, and I got little, little strings. So it's not going to last, this mask, but for now, it's good. Um, so you could see that I put pleats in the mask. I actually put a little piece of fabric in here um, which not fabric but like a, a wire to put to crimp on your nose I actually stole them from the grocery store you know with the t twist ties <laughs> anyway um, and then you what you do is you're going to put it on as you know twist put on your ear you know it's like this so it's really nice and tight put it around your face like this nice and tight and that's how it should fit it should be snug on the sides you should not feel claustrophobic in it. You can breathe okay. Um, it shouldn't be made out of synthetic stuff like, you know, spandex because it's got holes in it. So that will not be good. And if it doesn't stay on well, I found these really great uh, little clips you can find now. I think you've seen them all over. They go on the back of your head like this. This goes around like this. And then you could clip it in the... On the back and then you have you know you can make it as wide as you have to or as, as tight as you have to to make it fit now um, cotton masks are not considered to be really really protective by themselves i've actually been improvising by using either coffee filters this is like a little round one you can see that it's got it's used for a coffee pot you know it does cover your nose and your mouth so you don't have to have that big one you can see that it would fit in here right like this and then you can actually throw it away the next day. You can also use something that I hope doesn't gross you out, but they're like mini pads. I think these are terrific. They're small, they're disposable, they stick inside your mask like this. You put it on, nobody will ever know, okay? And then at the end of the day, you could take it out um, because many of us women have our makeup on, it kind of smears on the inside of these masks. So having these like little mini pads in there kind of protects the mask longer. You know, you can wear this mask over and over again for a little while, as long as you, um, uh, if you, somebody sneezes on you or, um, you cough a lot in it, it's better to get to change your mask. Okay. Otherwise, if you only use it, you went into a store, like a pharmacy, and then you came out, you went home, you can hang this on your rear view mirror. When you take it off, think about all the germs on the outside. You don't want to do this and take it off. You want to do this and then this, and then you could either hang it on your rear view mirror and then wash your hands with the Purell in your home. Or if you feel like it did get really, ex you know, exposed to germs, you can take it in the house and actually wash it with your regular clothes in soap and water. Best at hot water or warm water. I found that sometimes because you know how bra straps can kind of get caught around the washing machine. I've been putting mine in one of these things. It's like things you could put bras in. It'll wash it or a mesh bag. Definitely want to throw it in the dryer and you definitely could iron it. And the ironing will actually take out any extra germs on the top of the mask. Um, okay, 
I have to stop for a minute because I can't stand the way my hair looks. <laughs> so I'm going to put on a baseball cap. I hope you don't mind, but I can't, I don't know what you guys are doing out there, but this is driving me absolutely crazy. So let me <laughs> throw on this cap so you can see me better i feel like a woolly animal out here so much better all right so we're good to go there we go my nancy the np hat with my logo the hummingbird um, there's also some other things you can use to improvise in the home bandanas work great you can cut up curtains and such and i'm going to show you how to make a mask as well but i got this really good thing that I bought that goes over your head. It's for hair, like when you go boating. This could be folded up like three or four times around your neck, and you could be using this. If it's folded three or four times, it would definitely be more protective than one layer. So these are great things to have that you may have in the home right around your own house that you didn't even know about. Okay, so um, the Good Housekeeping Institute Textiles Lab does suggest that it be tightly woven, 100% cotton, avoid the knit fabrics like we talked about. Uh, as far as um, taking care of cleaning these masks, um, like we said, the washing machine, you could even put them in a sink of warm wo soapy water like you would a pair of socks and just wash them up, rinse them off well, put them in the dryer, and then you can iron them. Okay? If you have any questions, you can always email me at nancythenp at gmail.com. Make sure, like I said, when you take off your mask, that you do wash your hands or use some kind of Purell, which we're going to go over how to make our own. Okay, and um, actually, you know, just treat these masks like they're, um, you know, a um, piece of clothing. You know, put them in the washing machine. So I made my own masks, and I'm going to tell you how to make them if you really want to make one like this one I showed you. All right, um, you take a piece of material, and actually when I got this material, I washed it in the washing machine just to make sure it's really clean. My hands were clean before I started. I made a six by nine piece of fabric. So you could see that this is the back of, of this one, and this is the front, okay? I also now have really nice strips because I was able to buy these, and you actually sew them, one here and one like this on each side, on the in, you know, on the, the, the outside of this fabric. And once those are sewn on, then you're going to take your fabric that is the other side, the back, put it on top of this, and you're going to sew it on three quarter sides. You're going to leave a little bit open on this side so you can actually turn it inside out. And then I would put one of those little twist ties in it and uh, make a crimper and close the ends up. So it makes this mask after a while. You could actually get that pattern online, but I just thought I'd show you that, you know, you can make some pretty, pretty nice stuff out there yourself that's protective and will work for a long time. So how to make your own hand, hand sanitizer. First, you're going to need uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, and it should be at least 60%. Um, um, okay, and this one is actually 70% rubbing alcohol. You see that it's a 70 on here. Okay, so you're going to need that. Aloe vera, you know, that green stuff, it's the gel. Okay, you could use lemon juice for a little bit of, um, go away now, <laughs> lemon juice for a little bit of, um, of um, a smell, because otherwise it might not smell well. Or you can use some of these essential oils, you know, like peppermint or lavender or something. Okay, and you're going to also need a spray bottle of some kind. I got this one on the local hardware store. You know, so this is going to be, it's going to be nice when it's all put together. And so what is it, what the uh, ingredients is, is it's two to one alcohol to aloe vera. So that means for every two of something, two cups or whatever, it's one cup of the aloe vera. You're going to mix them up in a bowl. You're going to put a couple drops of the lemon juice or, or eight drops of any of these lavender drop things just to make it smell better. Stir it all up really good, pour it with a funnel into this bottle, and there you go. You have yourself your own really nice homemade hand sanitizer. So make sure the alcohol is at least 60%. That way you know that it's going to clean most germs, all the germs, and kill them off. Uh, make sure, this is the other takeaway, is iron your masks. It helps to keep the germs down, so that'd be good. 
and um that's pretty much it okay so until next time it's nancy the nurse practitioner follow me on youtube at caregiver success take care for now bye